Okay, we're continuing from our previous tutorial on how to quantize a track and set up your loop points. And uh, this is going to be a shorter tutorial, but I'm going to explain a few things that I haven't seen explained. So anyway, when you bring a track in, it automatically analyzes it. Now I brought this track in, and you look up here, you'll see it says 137.99. Now that track was probably recorded 138 BPM. Okay, now what you need to do if you want to get your loops totally accurate, zoom all the way in. Okay, this is already zoomed all, all the way in, but you zoom all the way in. Now you'll note, or I don't know whether you can see that on the screen here, these grids are slightly late to the actual where the kick drum beat, probably it's the kick drum or something like that. I partic you know, picked a track where it's got a fairly loud kick drum, same track I used before. Okay, now, what you do is you flip this arrow down, all right? Now this here, shrink and expand beat intervals. That's what you want. Now, that went the wrong way, so I'm gonna shrink them until that blue line comes dead on those last bass drum beats. Now I'm at the end of the track. It's very important to drag it to the end of the track. Okay, now see how it's gone to 138 BPM? Okay, that's what we want. Now we've got some accurate loops that are ready to go. Okay, and then you can go ahead and use the same procedure I showed you before to set your loops. So it's very important to do that. Now, by the way, if you have it not zoomed in and then you do this it will jump wildly what's this well that didn't jump too wildly we'll zoom out <laughs> zoom out further okay generally it will jump pretty wildly when you do your your um beat interval thing it's best to zoom in you've got to do that anyway to see where the beat falls now i got that one lined up really well and my loops should work out really good at the time of it recording this the xdjr1 i think um is on 1.09 or something like that firmware don't put firmware into your dj unit until you've read forums what people are saying about it i didn't upgrade i I'm still using 1.08 or whatever it is um, because there's too many problems with the 1.09. It's become a sort of a thing with a lot of manufacturers these days to use the uh, users as <laughs> kind of beta testers and guinea pigs. They never really quite, you know, get it right and they release things. So be careful. Read stuff. Don't just stick it on. Say, oh, this is the latest firmware. I'm going to stick it on. You Because you can't go backwards. Once you put the firmware in, you're in trouble you know you've got to stick with that you can't reinstall 1.08 after you put 1.09 or whatever it is on okay we're going to continue on okay i've learned over the years that the quickest way to learn a program is to learn the hierarchy of the program how it basically has been designed now the collection here i'm clicking on the collection that's just basically what you load into the uh, record box what you want to do next is create a playlist. When you create your playlist, you go like this. Select the full pane here, not the little arrow. Select the full pane, create a new playlist. We'll call that ABC, okay, or ABC. There it is. So we've got a playlist, ABC. We'll go back to collection and we go right click, add to playlist, ABC. You can multiple select but we'll do it like this add a playlist abc now we don't need to once you've done that with all your tracks say you've got a certain set that you want to do you name the playlist accordingly once you've done that you're finished with the collection as far as you're concerned all right so we've got the playlist now next thing we haven't got any hot cues so we're going to do that okay we're showing uh two tracks i have in here right now called new life one and new life two if we click that on the playlist it'll come up there same as before so you can create folders that are nested within the playlist etc etc i've got some uh, that have got bpms on them there's none in this particular folder right now but in this uh, those two tracks are nested because they're the, the right beat they're 138 so 136 to 138 bpm all right we've created a playlist you must do that we've left collection we've selected playlist next we need to create a hot cue bank okay 
generally I feel that this should do it automatically, this program, but, but it doesn't. So as far as I know, it doesn't. So we select this, select this arrow here, not the full thing. We don't want a full screen. Drag it in so you can see it clearly. Okay, here we go. Now, it says create a new hop cue bank list. Create it the same title as the actual song. Generally, I just cut and paste that. All right, create another one. Um, and it'll be new life too. If you cut and paste, this can be really fast. All right, I'm being a bit sort of slow here. Now we move it, new life one's there, new life two. All right, we selected new life one here. It's come up. Select that, the first point there. Okay, hit A. See how it says 2170? Uh, two seconds, 170 milliseconds, that came up. Select B. Hit B there. It comes up. Hit C. So your three cue points are now being moved into the actual second part of the hierarchy of the system so you can drop it on to XDJR1. All right, now bring up track New Life 2. Hit this. Hit 1. Hit that first. Hit A. Notice the numbers are the same. 4, 40, blah, blah, blah. Hit B. Hit C. Now you've got your hot cue bank list. It's a bit sort of daggy. It's a bit slow. These are the main ones you need. So you have your playlist here. You have your hot cue bank list here. Now you can do a tag list if you want. And you may need to write some info. Don't generally, I find it best not to click on the main pane. Click on the little side arrow one because then it brings it up on the side. And you can select your track and you can write in all whatever you want. For example here, I've written in New Life. It's important to fill all the stuff in. We've got the playlist, the hot cue bank list, tag list, up to you. I generally put a tag list in, um, cut and paste it like this. Right click, there's the tag list over here to the right. So you can write that in. The best, the more information you have in, generally the better. That'll carry a lot of that across to, to your XDJR1 or whatever unit you're using. Okay, I've brought up a, uh, a set that I've completed. Now have a look over here on the left and you'll see how it's actually organized. I've got my sets. When you select the actual BPM, the set comes up here. All the hot cue points are done by the method I just showed you. And I've also got a tag list set there. Basically with the tag list, you just select the unit and uh, it'll say create a tag list and you create that tag list. It's pretty easy. Now I put in a formatted USB stick. It's best to format it if you're going to do it first. It takes a second, just format it. And you don't need a really huge one. All right, when you actually have formatted it, if you just click on the K, well mine's K, yours could be called whatever, um, it'll uh, say something like this, to create a library, blah, 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 it will say it was updated because it put some garbage on there, you know, basic pioneer garbage. All right, now, next, what we want to do is move the playlist across to the USB stick. So exp you right click up here, we're starting from the right going to the left, export folder, this is the quickest way I've found to do it, and it's moving the tracks to the USB stick. This is how it'll work pretty well flawlessly in the XDJR1. So it's moving the topmost folder um, playlists, but it's moving those into subfolders down here along with it. And you'll see that that's duplicated on the USB stick. So I'm sliding this over a little bit and export that folder. The, the topmost folder, select it. This is your hot cue points, very important, to K. Let's move them. All right, now select all the tag lists that you've created and just go export tracks to K. When you look at K, here's your uh, USB drive here. You'll see that it has all the tracks there. See there? 130 to 130, 236 to 138. And uh, has all the hot cue banks there. All you need to do now to finalize it is click this. And it says it's going to create a library and it turns the USB stick off. Now you're good to go. That should work perfectly in your XDJR1. If you've done all the previous things that I've said, uh, your loop should work really good. Everything should be good.
So the next tutorial, we'll go to the XDJR one and we're going to show how to actually, you know, do a, several things there, plus use it with an iPad.